realize that as you begin to interact with God primarily in the place of prayer, that's where you know God. That's where you know God. In the place of prayer. If by any means in your life there is anything that can break you off a consistent prayer life. And when I'm talking about a man establishing a prayer life, we are saying you have checked your schedule. You go to work this time, you close this time, you go to the bank this time, you go to the market this time. This is the time I have left. For some others, it will be in the night. For most people, it will be in the night. Because you have an active day. When you have chosen your most convenient time, then you carve out nothing less than one hour every day and it's God's own and let it not just be any time let it be on a specific time that's the first plan you need to make in establishing a prayer life if you don't have a specific time you will never have a prayer life because the devil will help you manipulate your day if your will has not chosen a time that you are ready to be dedicated to no matter what you will not have a prayer life most of the time you pray spontaneously maybe when you find yourself in a bus you just pray i say Zaba, Laba, God help i cover i cover everybody cover now before you begin to enjoy god you must establish a discipline of giving a portion of your day to him that you cannot take back and you will maintain that as a lifestyle whether you are hungry whether there's no money whether there's problem whether there's crisis whether they eject you from your house and that time comes you open your prayer mat even if your landlord is is, is ejecting you on that time you throw your prayer mat and then he, he must you have to stand at attention and allow you you know we don't highly price our prayer life you don't highly price even if your father doesn't like the way you pray and you make your prayer look at something very important and he's 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 holding you call, and you start and you start if him you will come down it depends on how you exalt that moment depends on how you exalt don't just say i'll just come and move when the holy ghost move me then i just pray in tongues after we have finished doing that one we gave to god then he moves us here and there to pray <laughs> but we, we 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 keep that one as a religion because that's the only opportunity we have to really get to know god and when i talk about know, knowing god i'm talking about the direct personal revelations that god gives you about himself and one of the major reasons for those revelations is to equip you so that your soul and your mind will be anchored on his capability and his willingness to fulfill his word even in the midst of contrary situations and so we see a man here in one verse of the scripture he has spoken about nine revelations of god that you receive if you keep time with god you can come to discover that god can actually be anything you need for the fulfillment of your divine purpose and for for the for the manifestation of godliness upon the face of the earth god can become anything you need. he can become wisdom he can become strength do you understand you it's not as if he's not strength he's strength too. but you just discovered him that day yeah. hallelujah i struggled in my christian life i struggled more than the average christian to gain mastery in my prayer life I struggled more than the average Christian. And after struggling, and I, I've been a Bible teacher for a long time, then I was wondering why I was struggling. Because even in my prayerlessness, if I take the Bible to preach, ah, people say, my God, the word of God came to us so. Uh, but I know that there's a problem. So I say, okay, this Bible, let me start studying it now. The reason why I'm studying it is because I want to find the answer to my prayerlessness. After I pray for a while, I will go into the scriptures. I will pray for a while, I go. And I saw that David was a man of prayer. So I started reading the book of Psalms in view to finding what? An answer to prayer. 
In fact, if you have a problem, you should know the book to read. And when I started reading the book of Psalms, then I heard the writings of David when he said, Quicken us and we shall call upon thy name. And I found out that if I'm not quickened, I can't pray. Have you ever been in a state, one day you tried to pray and it was flat and dry? Have you tried that before? They talk, you know that the tongues wasn't coming from your spirit. It was far from your spirit. Because you were not quickened. And you wanted to pray in the flesh. So I knew that I had to be quickened in order to call upon God's name. So, uh, anytime I felt flat, I said, well, you know that I can't pray until I'm quickened. And that's not my responsibility. I trust you to quicken me. And God likes it when you put the responsibility on him. So I knew that that scripture was valid for every day of my life. I also knew that my prayerlessness had come to an end. The major object of my praying now is not that I want to receive something from God. I just want to know God more. I want to fellowship. Because the more you begin to press in God, and the more you begin to find security in God, and the more you begin to trust God, you come to a point where your, the prayers you pray for yourself will begin to reduce. And I can prove that to you from the book of Psalms. You see the sequence. Because you begin to find more security, and you begin to discover that God, even before you came here, had made adequate provision and preparation for you, and it will just take more of revelation for you to be sure of that. And when revelation comes, it's easy for you to have confidence, it's easy for you to have faith, it's easy for you to trust. And so you see, one verse, nine revelations. That is the Christian life. That's what God does to a man in a secure place. He keeps revealing himself to him so that that guy's work, his manner of living can be affected until he becomes perfect becomes mature in relating with God from the standpoint of the numerous revelations of Him that He has received. Somewhere along the line, my problem was that I didn't have enough money. So every time I went to God, I prayed. I said, Lord, you know, you know my heart, how I want to serve you, how I want to do your will, but you know, I don't have what it takes. And God spoke to me and said, for everything I want you to do, you have enough to do it today. So remain there doing the one that you have enough to do today. Tomorrow you will have money. Because the one tomorrow will require money. But the one you, you are asked to do today, you have enough to do it. So I now discovered that I was looking at the wrong thing at that time. You know that time I used to pray for one million and the, I came to realize after that revelation that I, if I had one million, I didn't even have what to do with it. So most of us are praying prayers from the flesh and trying to compare ourselves with other people. If the person drove a car here, God knows that for your current job description, trekking is the alternative. So trek with life. Trek with joy. In Jesus' name. And I need to let you know that I've not lost the ability to trek. I can, if we move back to trekking, hallelujah. Even those days while I was still very much here, I packed my car and trek. Because I trekked until I loved it. And anything that would take me away from trekking, I want to bind it. So I prefer my wife driving around. I heard she speaks in town now. I prefer that. But for me, I, I can Because if I trek, I have time to speak in tongues. So if I'm in the jet plane and in the air-conditioned car, I'm... Hey, I've lost my luxury. The luxury of praying on the streets. And many of you have seen me on the street and you wanted to pick me your car. The reason why I entered was because I wanted to be polite. But you distracted me from something. I like moving in, in, in the Holy Ghost and just praying in tongues like that. Not because I'm asking God for anything. That's how I feel free on the inside. Then when God began to deal with me, I discovered that for every given time, I have what I need to do God's will. From there, my prayer point, it changed. Then I started doing what God wanted me to do part time. When God's demands increase, He will increase your capacity in the natural to meet 
with his demands so that you will know that every increase you have if if you have more time because god is asking for more time in his presence if you have more money it means that your current assignment requires more money it doesn't mean that your wardrobe needs to change i don't need a car to add to a, the sense of my being because if you have found that secure place without any material thing in your hand you have already found security in god and nothing in the natural can increase it or decrease it before god gives you great possessions he makes you what a great man don't forget that if god allows us we'll do prosperity weekend we'll redefine what prosperity is and you'll find out that most of what was spoken about it was not true